Hey guys, it's Marka Pussy here and we're back with another song reaction and today we are going to be doing the song Straight Lines by Vola who I have been assured is a prog metal band but the song by the looks of it is only about four and a half minutes long so how proggy can it be? Is it really prog if it's any less than 14 minutes long? Because you need like seven minutes in the middle where nothing's happening but that's for mood or else it's not really prog, is it? You guys will have your opinions on that, you are welcome to put them in the comments below. Meanwhile, we're gonna go, we're gonna check out this reaction, we're gonna see if it is prog metal, or if it is in fact, emo. And we're gonna use the emo skill to find that out, so stick around for that near the end. I really like this, right, because it's, as far as I can work out, it's in free fall timing because of the way that the drummer in the riff, the main riff, is playing. It feels weird, like the drummer's, there's at least one repetition of it where he's playing something slightly askew, which has kind of thrown me off every time I listen to it. The main riff is like, it's one of those kind of generic metal riffs that's just cool. You can repeat that whilst the rest of the band are changing the chord progression underneath it to make that sound kind of nice, which is then allowing him to just sing quite a nice melody. He's got a really nice tone of voice. It's no particularly gruff at the moment. It might get there. It blends in well with the rest of the music production wise and it's just, yeah, it's just so far for a metal band, Quite just a good easy listen, which yeah, I'm in I'm into that. That was lovely. That was lovely. I knew it was building up to something. I knew something was coming and I was like, right, that's going to kick off. When everything else dropped out and he did his wee melody line, but it had that weird effect on the pedal as well, so that it had that kind of second line that had something weird going on with it. I can't quite make out what exactly it was. It was just, that, was, that was just cool. <laughs>
I can I I kind of see the prog metal bit of it. It's not overly prog, but it's got it's taken elements of prog stuff and just condensed it into like a normal sized song to make it so that it's not completely fucking insufferable. It's weird because it's like it's metal, but it's also not. Overly metal? I think that's the singing as much as the production on it. The production is nowhere near... Like, the production on the drums is not metal production. But the guitar riffs are... It would be really easy for another produ- like for another producer to come in and take this song and make it sound so much fucking heavier and so much more kind of metal. But I kind of like that they haven't because it wouldn't suit that guy's voice at all. And what they've actually done and said is kind of pitch perfect. I also like the level of experimentation that they've done with the vocal effects and stuff because that's just cool. It would have been much easier for them to just go, he's just going to sing during this bit and then we'll come back in and the producer go, oh, that's fine. But they've clearly went, nah, what, 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 we, what we trinkets have you got lying around that we can plug into that microphone, mate, to make this soon fucking mental. Most of this song is quite nice, if although... They have taken the one riff and just repeated it constantly. But the chorus... Mm. kind of interrupted a solo again but mm, I've said in previous videos that I don't particularly love it when metal bands cross themselves with kind of EDM type influences I find it kind of weird and a little bit off-putting that was kind of dynamite that was pretty dynamite and it's just it was such a weird choice of intro like I don't know what what synth tone they're using but it's so fucking weird it's just cool. It just it adds a whole other dimension to the music. At, at the point where it could have got a bit samey because they are repeating the same motif constantly throughout the whole song, they've then went, okay, this is the point where we need to add a new dynamic in there and it's just been kind of genius. Something just occurred to me there, right? And it's maybe going to sound like an insult, but it's really not supposed to be. But that's kind of like... I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase this. Like, coffee shop metal music. Inoffensive and easy listening. But still metal. A lot of people would use the coffee shop thing as, as an insult. I don't really see it that way. Some of those some of those songs are it's really hard to write. Like we've had this conversation with Taylor Swift. It's really hard to write songs 
that are that catchy that the general populace just go, yeah. I feel like f for a metal song, that's kind of in that category where like a non-metal fan could listen to that song and go, yeah, that was good. That was good. It was solidly catchy, really good production, really good production. Musicianship was absolutely fucking great. But let me know in the comments below, what did you guys think of that song? Did you like that song? Did you not like that song? Do you disagree with the coffee shop sentiment? Because you're welcome to. That's absolutely fine. But the most important thing is how emo was that song? Twinkly guitars, it did not have a lot of twinkly guitars, but it did have some twinkly synth in it. So I'm going to say twinkly guitars is about here and the overwrought singing is not overly overwrought, but it was, it was definitely wrought. So I'm going to put it here. That's where Straight Lines by Vola lands on the emo scale and if any of you get any disagreements with that then you uh, can happily go fuck yourselves. I've been Mark Abusi, thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.